Hi guys. Wait a second. I love how I could totally record everything through the flip screen, but I still use my mirror <laughs> to, <laughs> to talk to you guys. How are you? Um, I hope you're doing well. I came back from LA to my studio last week. Hi guys, it's editing friend. Boo, 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 boo. So I realized that I never explain anything that happened in LA. It's because this video is already so freaking long and I'm like, I can't add what I went through in LA, a very exciting trip and this at the same time because let's be honest you're not going to watch it it's too long <laughs> so i'm going to leave the la situation on another video i hope you're okay with that i mean i already made the decision so i hope you're okay with that anyway let's go back to the video and now we're ready we're ready to work so this week guys i would love to do this project with you, are you uh, are you up for the challenge? Yes. So I don't know if you remember, but um, a month ago when you and I were in Tokyo together, uh, strolling our asses in the cold but sunny Tokyo weather, we bought together um, screens. They're called the liter screens. I think they're called the liter screens because I don't know how people usually call them. I think they're screens. Uh, I could say. <clears throat> screens a million times and my voice is fading anyway so um today we're going to try them out i don't know if i could show you the mess my suit is so messy so i have this paper right here that we're going to use for this project i also have my light box and i was dwelling <laughs> i was wondering which thing we could work on for testing the screens and um, I did the first page of my graphic novel. You patrons are probably sick of seeing this page <laughs> already because uh, we already did like a color test together. Uh, but as you can see, this is like the first sketch. I still don't know if this is the paper that I'm going to use because this is a 250 gram paper, which is too thick for doing a whole graphic novel. But um, it's perfect for what we're going to do today. So the screen, you guys, where, where are the screens? I have no idea. Let me, give me one second, okay? out of this there you go okay these are the screens you already know what screens are but if you don't that's totally okay the screens are basically a huge sticker that manga artists used to use back in the old days to do shadowing texture uh, backgrounds because they're amazing so basically you take a cutting knife and you place them on top of your illustrations. I don't know if you can focus. And um, you can get these marvelous patterns on top of your illustrations. And it was a much easier way to do backgrounds. Um, I don't know if I can show you my book collection, but look at this. I'm, I've always been a huge fan of uh, Cup Captor. Sakura and oh god I love this baby so I don't know if you can see this is like randomly but all of these screens that you see all of those textures that you see on the background they're made from screens so all of those patterns that you see there those are screens baby everything that isn't black and it has like this shadowing or even what's on the background like for example I think those um, circles as well. All of those textures are screens. It used to be the old fashioned Photoshop that manga artists used to use. So for example, that amazing, oh, this episode is really nice. Uh, <laughs> just thinking about character Sakura. Um, 
so all of that uh, gradient that you see over there, that's one screen. And it's actually a very similar screen that I bought. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a gradient um, screen. So it's darker over here and goes lighter. And that's exactly, you guys, what... Please focus. There you go. That's exactly what we're going to do today. So I usually ink my illustrations with blue, but since someone is ringing the door anyway since the screens are black or gray i'll have to ink the comic that i just showed you the first page in black which is something that i haven't done in such a long time and then we're going to cut those bastards so you can see what i'm talking about Hi guys, is it is it recording? Hello my loves. <laughs> I realize I never do. Um, there's a truck passing by, I don't know if you can listen to it. Uh, I never do voiceovers and today I really felt like doing one. Um, it's kind of late, I'm still in my studio editing this and I am staring at myself, testing all of these markers. I remember uh, feeling super overwhelmed about the amount of markers that I have. Most of them, like that Kuretake one, wasn't working. Like um, Kuretakes tend to explode a lot and the ink doesn't flow properly. That one wasn't working as well. But um, what I wanted to find was a marker that was thin enough for me to do this comic. So I was trying the Molotov, that Kuretake one, but it was too thick and the pencil brush pen which is really nice but um, it's super tricky to get fine lines with it so in the end i decided to keep the molotov is that how you spell pronounce anyway i also realized how rusty i am while inking inking is so hard you guys it looks super easy when you do it but um the, the issue that i have with inking is that you have to be really good at ink <laughs> I guess I am so used to quote inking my illustrations with um, pencil like outlining my illustrations with pencils and pencils you guys are so forgiving when you do a, a line that is not perfect enough it's so wonderful because it's like the pencil is staring at you and it's telling you it's fine if you don't do a perfect line and I think it's very pens like black pens or markers tend to be less forgiving in that sense but anyway, I was going through your comments, my loves, and there was such a nice question from someone called Bird. I love the name, by the way. And um, the question is, what gave you the confidence to share your work at first? Do you worry a lot about how others perceive your work? Do you have imposter syndrome and how you work through it? And I guess, God, I wanted to thank you, Bird, for asking these questions because they're so to the point. The first thing is that what gave me the confidence to say, uh, share my work at first. I think I was really inspired by other artists and writers and people, uh, creative people sharing their work online. Um, I remember feeling so touched every time someone shared a really uh, like intimate detail about themselves because I felt either related or I felt like, oh my God, I'm not the only one who is struggling with this. And I'm like, I wonder if I can make people feel exactly the same feeling of um, you're not alone that stupid thing that you once thought or like that thing that you went through once I also felt it the same way so I'm like I wonder if I could make people feel less lonely about what they're going through their struggles their insecurities etc um, and about the other thing about do you worry about how others perceive your work <laughs> oh my god <laughs> where should I begin yes I you guys every time I post something online I worry a lot but I guess it's something natural we're not machines 
um, since I open myself up to people with my work and with not only like my videos but my, my illustrations on Instagram and and my content and my graphic novels and stuff like that I share so much of who I am and what I go through emotionally and like um, creatively it's so hard to that uh, that uh, flowing of sharing to be one way street I don't know if I'm making sense but I'm, I'm giving so much of myself that it's it's super hard to say like okay I'm, I'm only going to give a lot of myself but I'm not going to let anyone in I guess when you open yourself up you also let stuff in and I worry a lot about what other people think and I guess it's a natural thing because we're artists we're full of emotions and uh, like uh, fears and silly things that we go through and not silly things al also really important things so I guess it's, it's a normal thing to worry about what the other might think of you I guess the, the issue that it comes down to when we're talking about worrying about uh, what other people think is when you're stopping like you're not doing stuff because you worry too much about what other people think so i guess that's a like complex balance that um we artists are supposed to endure and know how to work with it is uh you have i mean you can be scared but not too scared uh in order to stop yourself from doing something i guess when you paralyze and you're like nope i'm not doing anything at all because i'm too scared that's not a good thing you know so of course I'm worried. I worried all the time, <laughs> but um, but I'm still posting. So if this makes you feel less lonely, I wanted to tell you right now, you guys, that you're not alone. We are all feeling scared a lot all the time, especially when I'm about to hit publish a video or an illustration. God, I feel so worried about like I just want people to like me, and that's such a, like a humane thing to feel, you know. Um, anyway, now I think I'm supposed to talk, so I'm going to let Fran talk. Okay guys, so this is the page. I am so rusty with inking because I haven't inked an illustration like this with the pen <laughs> in so long. But anyway, so I was thinking maybe I should use this screen over here. I don't know if you can see the texture, uh, but it's quite light. So. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to take it out of the bag and I'm going to place it gently over this. I think, oh man, what I'm trying to see you guys is how thick the points are because I don't know if you can see but the pattern is quite thick. There you go. So the points are quite separate so that's why I should have bought a more thin point, I think. For example, I have this one. Yes, so I'm going to use this one because it's exactly the amount of I need. And I don't know if you can see, but the points, the points are really, really tiny. So for a page this size, I think it will look better. Uh, most of what is happening on screen is to the main two characters on a car. I think I'm going to go one by one. So what I usually do here is I'm going to cut each um, frame first and then I'm going to place it gently and then with a cutting knife, with a precision cutting knife, you're supposed to remove the excess. I was thinking maybe for the windows and I don't know how this would look, um, but maybe we can use the sky it might be too big for like the clouds but i think it could lit it could look i don't know coolish uh <laughs> let's just see how it goes maybe let's just do the first layer first and then we can move on to other screens i hope you enjoy that segment <laughs> okay bird about the imposter syndrome i feel Oh man, not qualified to answer that question because I feel like I still don't have the whole imposter syndrome figure it out, how to have a healthy relationship with feeling worthy about what you have. I It comes up, up like in waves, ups and downs. I usually feel okay-ish with what I have and what I've accomplished, but um, 
doctors um, when I'm tired or like when I'm going through some bad period uh, with my work or like with my creative process, I feel like I am so unworthy, like I don't deserve what I'm going through or like I feel I have no talent and nothing to give to people. Um, recently, I went on a trip to Los Angeles and it was such an amazing trip. I'm sorry about the noise, by the way. And uh, the entire time I felt such a like imposter, like imposter syndrome at its finest because I'm like, oh my God, I'm staying at this very nice hotel. Um, and, and I do wonder if I'm, I'm the best person to, like I'm, I'm the, quali the most qualified person to be in this hotel. Like I wonder if they um, should have invited another person. So I guess imposter syndrome, the only way to uh, face it is by reminding yourself that you are worthy and you're doing the best you can. It's something that I had to keep reminding myself constantly and that's the hardest part because you always have a voice going on inside of you saying, mm -mm, no, it's not working. You just have to keep it, like keep doing it. Okay guys, I just went to the bathroom. Now I'm back. So we have this one to go. Um, what I usually do with um, parts like this, in which you might need to put one tiny piece, 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 it sounded like I was talking about urine, I was not. Uh, this piece of screen, uh, what I do is I use every single piece that I can, so I can make it work. There you go, look at that. No, wait, I might have to do it the other way around. There you go. You may be wondering, why will anyone use a screen instead of the computer? You can easily, wait, I always save one of these papers just in case I wanna save one of these screens for later. Uh, why would anyone submit themselves to do this if they have a computer? That's a very fair question, my loves. A very good one, uh, because it's so endearing and so lovely sometimes to do all of this by hand. I could ask you the same question, like why will anyone use gouache and watercolors or color anything without a computer if we already have a computer? And it's because the feeling and the texture changes so much when you're doing it real life versus when you're doing it on the computer. For this part, instead of using the same screen that I've been using all of this, time, which is by the way the GR97, I'm going to use this one, the GR400, it sounds like a robot, but I'm going to use this one, there you go, because it has a really nice gradient, gradient, the, the gradient goes darker as you go down, downwards, oh it has an extra paper, that was nice of them. So I think I'm going to use it this way. I don't know if it makes sense what I'm saying. There's people that do this immediately, like they cut the thing right away. But I'm just too scared and I'm too, too inexperienced to do this one hand, like immediately. I'm sure lots of people in the comment section are saying right now, this is not how you're supposed to do it, stop. And they're crying blood and they're like, sacrilegious this is the worst thing ever i'm subscribed but you guys i never use screens so please please be patient so what you do now is you remove this this bastard is super 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 thin so the first half like all of this chunk doesn't have any sticker so it's really easy to peel like there's nothing here no adhesive and then this is i don't i don't know if you can realize how thin this thing is and even the paper of the screen i mean the sticker of the screen is not as adhesive it's a very light glue so it's really easy to oh look at that so satisfying is that correct yeah so it's really easy to put on and off. On camera, it doesn't look like a gradient, but believe me, in real life, it does look like a, like a gradient. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this whole thing 
God, it looks so nice. It looks like a manga. Let's just take a break, you guys. This is a dangerous thing to be pouring milk and coffee near our supplies. This is how it looks. <clears throat> As you can see, everything looks quite plain because I haven't add, I haven't added any sh like lighting, and the shadows almost look this. There's someone talking just outside my window. It's Louis, my roommate. Go away, Louis. There you go. No, he's still there. So, like I was saying, I need to add some lighting details. God, this this looks so nice. It looks like I just printed this from the computer, but oh no, baby, so analog. So what I'm going to do now is add more lighting and uh, probably the clouds, and we're probably going to be done really soon. So hold on tight. <laughs> Hi guys, can you, are you focused enough? There you go, it's kind of dark now that I think about it. I had to take a break from, there you go, from this project only because I had to charge the battery. I just bought a new battery, so this won't be an issue anymore. But um, now that we have full battery, <laughs> I mean, it was a nice thing, to be honest, because I made some progress on the comic that I want to upload to Instagram this week. Um, so it was a very productive break from the screen projects. So um, yeah, really nice thing. Anyway, uh, I'm going to focus on this tomorrow, but now we have to keep doing the sky. I don't know how I feel about this sky, you guys, because even though it's a really nice green, the um, it the the clouds might be too big, and I don't know if it, it's like you can get that it's a, it's a cloud. I don't know if I'm making sense. Anyway, I'm going to cut this. I'm also going to put the same screen on the other windows and see how they look. And also, I'm going to apply. Um, I was thinking whether to take out the screen on this, uh, on the black details, because I don't know if you can see, but it goes lighter because the, there's a screen on top. So I'm going to take all of the screens from the black detail. So this one as well, and the hair, and this one, and this one. So it will go, there's more contrast. You know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, let's get to work. Okay guys, I'm done with the first step of our illustration. As you can see, the whole thing looks quite plain because everything has like the same gray scale value, so to speak. Here's the deal guys, I need to go now because Ed and I are going to a concert now. 
it's crazy, right? We never go to concerts and suddenly in February we have been to two already. They're like classical music concerts. Uh, I'm trying to untangle the curtains. So the second and last step of our illustration, I'm going to do it tomorrow. So until then, see you in a little bit. Welcome to Brooklyn. Uh, good morning, guys. Today is Tuesday. You have no idea how sleepy I am. I don't know why I'm so sleepy. <laughs> but I decided to um, spoil myself and get some go good old nice coffee from a coffee shop. I always do this when I, I need some help in the sleep department. Uh, today, my loves, we're going to finish this bastard, even if it's the last thing I have to do in this world. Um, like I said last night or yesterday, um, everything is quite dull and plain because everything has a screen on. I think every time you see people and like manga artists use screens, they use it on a very... They don't use it overall in the in the whole page. They use it for like really specific details. I don't know if you can see. So they leave a lot of things in white. So what I did here is not the thing you're supposed to do, you know, like put the whole thing with screens. So right now I'm going to clean this illustration. Uh, like I said yesterday, and I'm repeating myself. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I'm just going through a checklist of all the things that I have to do. I, I will remove all of the black, um, the screens that are on top of black, only to make it more contrasted. And I also would love to do some light coming in this direction. This is like six in the morning light. So it's probably, they're witnessing the sunrise. So I'm, I'm probably going to do the light coming from this direction. Um, I showed Ed. Um, last night my improvement with this comic strip and he told me it would be cool to put another screen on top of this and I had no idea if he could do that so I'm actually going to put another screen on top of this to see how it looks like so that's where we're going to do today I'm not in focus there you go <laughs> okay guys let's 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 do this let's go, let's do this together about this so every year, usually the second or third week of January, for the past several years, to try to get my hand. He writes, climate change has become a defining factor in companies' long-term prospects. We're on the edge of a fundamental reshaping wise business. I think that he would change mm -hmm. and said, you know what? Which means that we're either going to vote you out of your job or we're going to pull our money. He's throwing down the gauntlet. And what are you thinking when you finish reading this letter? Fund, which will invest $1 billion over the next four years. Scientists, activists, NGOs, and the plan, individually, one by one. This is a carbon emit. That's what it is. That's what it's going to be. Amount. It's a huge amount. Huge amount. That's potentially a huge plus, just to go neutral. This massive $10 billion pledge to combat climate change. And we don't know completely about what that program is ultimately going to look like. But we do know what Amazon investing in 100,000 electric trucks, for example. So when you get your Amazon Prime package mm -hmm. to invest strictly in climate, if this is by 2050, they say they want to be carbon negative. It's a technology. It's a company that delivers millions of packages or an airline company that has the ones with the money to experiment in this world are doing kind of modest things when it comes to maybe Delta. Corporations seem to be responding more lowercase d democratic to the problem of climate than perhaps some government. Because they're actually responding to what their consumers want. These companies aren't dumb. Probably all of the above. There's probably a little bit of marketing. There's probably a little bit of maybe the investors are going to look at me differently. Why they're doing it. And whether it matters. And whether it ultimately matters. To unleash yours. Visit jobschangeus.com to see the and according to three networks of the Okay guys, we're almost done with this monster. <laughs> As you can see, I um cut some details to reflect some lighting coming from the windows. 
and I think this allows the screen not to be as gray as it is I mean it's still grayish but I did my best and now I'm going to do add a, an idea I had I'm going to put a second layer of the screen here I don't know if it's caught on camera but this one has a really nice gradient so I'm gonna see which one I think could be work best maybe this way I remember you guys I used to do a very I don't know if this is also the wrong way of doing it but beforehand like before doing this technique I used to grab one screen and I used to for example underlay the tiny pieces like this and I used to grab a pencil and do the shape that I needed like this I don't know if you can see it this is the pay this is the, the the shape and then I used to cut with an eraser and I realized even though this one looks the smart thing to do it will take you forever and you won't eat my, at least I'm not very precise with that. as you can see I'm not very clean when when I'm working but every time I used to cut the screen like this I always missed um some parts and it never i can never feed it properly like this so if you're working with lots of details i highly recommend that you cut the screen directly onto the paper i know it will it's terrifying to do it but i promise you um it saved me so much time and so much having to do it over and over and over again and it's way more precise this is the last one guys can you believe it I don't know if this will actually look... Mm. Yes, it does! Oh, that's nice. I don't know if it, if it makes any difference on camera. So now what I do... So I don't know if, I've ever, if you guys have ever used a precision cutting knife, but they're really heavy. This is like metal. And what I've noticed when I cut the screens is that you have to let the proper weight of the knife to do the job you're not supposed to press that hard in the beginning and i don't know if you can see but i have some marks of like um when i used to press the cutting knife a lot but just let the the pressure and the weight of the knife to do its thing that's the only amount of pressure you're supposed to give to the screen tones there's people that call this screen, there's other people that call this screen tones. I call them screens. But please let me know if you try them because I would love to see what you do with this. I think they're so fun and they're so satisfying to do. <laughs> That's it! We're done! Look at this! Um, I'm really happy with the result. I don't think I have the patience to do an entire graphic novel with screens, but I think the experiment was worthwhile. Um, definitely ha you have to remove the screens from darker areas because otherwise they won't look as sharp. Even the lines that are underneath the screens, they look way more opaque um, and lighter than uh, the marker itself. Also, as a last minute experiment, I decided to remove some of the sky screen um, screen tone to I don't know made this effect of land because otherwise I think it looked like the characters were driving the sky I don't know if that makes sense but I think it looks super cool now like there's some can you see what I'm talking about like this thing it looks like actual land and or like the desert or something like that anyway I think it looks way cooler now Look at this, you guys. We did this together. <laughs> Can you believe this? It um, it looks so nice. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Someone is drying their hands outside. Anyway, um, that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me. There you go. Uh, I hope you enjoy this nice experiment. I love doing this type of things with you. I really wanted to give a huge shout out to my patrons because they allow me to buy these screens. 
Screens are expensive, my loves. Um, thank God I had some of them here with me. So this video was all possible thanks to my patrons. They always allow me to buy art supplies and to do these amazing and like worthwhile experiments. To, so thank you so much, guys, for all your support. Um, I hope you're having a really, really lovely week and and friday and weekend ahead and i love you and you're the best and see you next week and thank you so much for keeping me company you're the best okay bye guys <laughs>